Today I want to talk about what to do if you've accidentally eaten something you shouldn't on autoimmune paleo AIP diet and what I've eaten over the last few days. So yeah, if you've ever eaten something that you shouldn't, it's the worst feeling. Like you feel like that, that creeping red heat feeling all over and oh it's it's like you know if you've done something wrong and you know that you shouldn't have oh it's the worst thing when i first found out i was celiac i used to have nightmares all the time about eating gluten and this is the same thing it's just the you know that you shouldn't have it you've been working so hard not to have it and then you accidentally eat it whether it's by your fault or just because somebody put something in your food and you didn't realize it, it's hard. The other night, my husband made some flank steak and he made two of them. One of them had chili powder, paprika, and a bunch of stuff on it. And then mine just had some marinade that had nothing not AIP compliant on it. And then he took them off the grill and he's like, oh no, I forgot to figure out which one was what. And he was pretty sure he got the right one, like knew which one had the paprika and everything on it, but he wasn't 100% certain. And so that was just, it was kind of concerning, but I mean, I wasn't not gonna eat. And so it really reminded me of like that whole feeling of like, what happens if you eat something that you shouldn't? And really the things that you should do are, if you eat something that you shouldn't, just go ahead on with life like you should. If it's something that is going to be introduced uh, within a couple of stages on AIP, then um, just, you know, go with it. Just, it's fine. Don't introduce anything else new for a while and look out for symptoms. Uh, treat it like a regular introduction. So say you got paprika and it wasn't your time to have paprika yet. You, you ate it, you got over the initial shock, and then you just want to monitor yourself for the next 72 to week long of symptoms. And if you would just reintroduce something else, then you're gonna have to basically go back and redo that again later. Wait for 72 hours to a week and see if anything happens. And if nothing happens, you could reintroduce both things technically. Or if you start seeing symptoms from it, like you know any of the b gas bloating, skin rashes, any of those things, then you're gonna have to take both of the things that you just reintroduced back in, the paprika and whatever else was that you just reintroduced. The best thing to do is to go back to strict AIP until you feel better and then start reintroducing again. You can just start from the point where you were. So say you've already successfully reintroduced egg yolks and black pepper and then you get the paprika by mistake then you can go back to the egg yolk stage, it's fine. But if you just reintroduce cumin the same day as paprika, then you're gonna to wanna to remove the cumin and the paprika if you had any sort of reaction. So if you have something like gluten, for instance, though, that's gonna put you back on AIP, like the elimination portion for a couple of weeks probably. Just because gluten is such an inflammatory food and can really cause leaky gut on its own. And so you're gonna really want to make sure that you are healed before moving on to any reintroductions again. And you'll probably have to start back over with reintroductions if you've already started in that phase. Just know that if you have gotten something, it's not the end of the world. You just kind of have to get back to where you were feeling great again and then start over again with the reintroductions or start from where you were. Is it ideal? No, but ideally you wouldn't have any of these accidental contaminations, but we don't live in an ideal world, right? So <laughs> just don't freak out about it. Because remember, stress is just as bad as having food that doesn't agree with us. So just kind of like see it as a bump in the road and you're gonna have bumps in the road in your health journey throughout this. And it's, it's a long-term process. This is not something that's gonna take a day or two to do. And you just move on. I mean, you're still in better shape than you were than when you started AIP, even if you had gluten or something. So just keep that in mind and you're just, increasing your health by increments. And if you have a setback, then you have to like decrease it a little bit, but you'll come back up. No matter what, you're still better than down here. And your symptoms will resolve and you feel so much better. And if you do have this happen, I'm sorry, I know it sucks, but just remember, you'll get over this too. Onto what I've been eating. So Saturday morning, we went on yet another humongous seven mile hike. So before we left, I made the plantain pancakes from the autoimmune protocol made simple cookbook that I just got. 
along with one of or with the very last of my apple sage sausages that I made during batch cooking prior to AIP. Those pancakes were really good. Uh, if you don't like plantains, you probably won't like them though because they're very plantain tasting, but they were good and fluffy. So the hike we did was another one. We're trying to get ready to do this backpacking trip that's coming up this weekend. And so we went to a place and it was like uh, 11,000 feet in altitude, I think at the end. So there's a lot of snow at the top. Um, but so we packed up our day packs with all kinds of stuff. And I wanted to test out some of these backpacking meals that I've been dehydrating to see if they'll work. And so when we stopped for lunch, I made a Thai chicken curry that I had dehydrated and it was really good. I used the curry recipe from Rachel Bryant's healing kitchen in her Thai curry soup. Uh, and then I dehydrated that. And then I used coconut milk powder and a bunch of other like veggies and uh, canned chicken dehydrated that, but it came out and it was delicious. And of course I had one of the AIP carob chip cookies. I mean, I, I make huge batches of them and I just freeze them. So it's just easy to take them out for when we do these trips. Since this was a seven mile hike and it took us hours and hours and hours, I did eat a lot of snacks. So one of the snacks I had were the bare apple chips. Then I also had the lemon pie date balls, uh, the recipes from the autoimmune wellness handbook. And then my dinner was the Greek beef hash from Backcountry Paleo's site. She has a lot of AIP recipes and she does a lot of camping and hiking and backcountry kind of backpacking trips as well. So she has a lot of backpacking meals to dehydrate. And so that's why I tried hers out. And that was really good too. It was just like ground beef with Kalamata olives and a lot of veggies and made that with a cauliflower couscous from her site as well. Sunday morning was Father's Day, so I didn't seem to have any reactions to the egg yolks. So I had another egg yolk omelet, and then I had more of the plantain uh, pancakes from the day before. Uh, they sprinkled with a little bit of uh, shredded coconut and tiger nuts, uh, shredded or sliced tiger nuts, and some freeze dried strawberries, and two slices of US wellness sugar free bacon. For lunch that day, I had the other half of the chicken pot pie from Paleo on the Go that I had Friday night for our Micnic night. And for dinner that night, it was that flank steak that was marinated in some like olive oil and vinegar and a couple other things, but everything was supposed to be AIP compliant, and I think it was. Plus, I had some arugula from our CSA with oil and vinegar, and then uh, some sweet potato rounds with a cilantro pesto that just didn't have any nuts in it. Breakfast on Monday was that squash porridge from the Healing Kitchen, along with two slices of bacon. Lunch yesterday was just leftovers of the steak and sweet potatoes and everything for dinner the night before. It was a cold rainy day yesterday. Like it was definitely reminiscent of fall. So I made a banana bread cause we had these like ripe bananas. And so I made the banana bread. I will link to the recipe below. And then I made the pumpkin spice latte from the autoimmune protocol made simple book. And that was really good. It does call for making a vanilla maple cream uh, that takes about 20 minutes prior to making the latte. I made it and then I wanted to just keep drinking that by itself, which was so good too. Dinner last night was the caramelized onion meatloaf from the Healing Kitchen. It was good. I liked it. I just missed ketchup or some sort of sauce on my meatloaf. Um, and then I had more arugula with oil and vinegar. And then I had roasted acorn squash with coconut butter, raisins, cinnamon, and sea salt. Breakfast this morning was leftover the porridge with a piece of that banana bread and also a pork maple blueberry sausage, but that wasn't pictured because it was still being heated. Lunch today is going to be leftover the meatloaf and acorn squash. And I just realized that dinner tonight's supposed to be pork carnitas that I was supposed to put in the slow cooker. Guess it's going to be an Instant Pot recipe now. <laughs> All right, well, make sure you ask any questions you have about autoimmune paleo, reintroductions, autoimmune disease, any of these things, because I'd be happy to answer them and make sure to like and subscribe. And I'm actually not going to be posting a video this Friday because we're gonna be on that backpacking trip. So I will post a video all about that next week. So I'll see you guys next week.